Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So for this video, we're going to be checking out the latest release from one of my favorite Canadian micro brands, and that is this Intrepid X Divers Chronograph from the Whitby Watch Company. Now I've been wearing the stainless steel version of this watch for the past few days, but Whitby Watch Company was also kind enough to lend in this really cool black PVD coated version of a timepiece as well. And there really is a lot to like with these diver chronographs. Now aside from the specifications, I really like the fact that the Whitby Watch Company does integrate a lot of Canadian heritage into each one of their watch models. Now in particular, the naming convention for the Intrepid X actually stems from the man himself, Sir William Stephenson, who was codenamed Intrepid, and he helped lead up the clandestine organization in Canada, in Whitby, Ontario, called Camp X. And this camp was actually part of the spy craft that Sir Winston Churchill utilized with the Canadian Allied Forces to help turn the tide in World War II. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Sir William Stephenson, there's actually a lot of useful information on the Whitby Watch Company website, which is linked in the description of this video. But for now, let's flip the camera around so you can actually check out these watches up close in the studio. So here is what you're greeted with if you choose to purchase the Intrepid X Divers Chronograph from the Whitby Watch Company. It does come in this very solidly built Nanook 904 Canadian made waterproof case. This case actually contains a few slots for traveling watches as well as pouches to contain some other materials like this card that tells you that you get an Intrepid Tartan that's a registered product of Scotland. So this is a really cool nice add-on bonus tying into the overall military aesthetic of these chronographs. And then of course you have the watches themselves which are actually produced in a fairly limited number. The uh, stainless steel version of a diver's chronograph is limited to 100 pieces and this black fully PVD version of a timepiece is only limited to 50. Now both watches are priced with an early bird pricing of 1890 Canadian dollars. That comes in around the 1500 USD range. And if you do factor in the unique design features and specs for these watches, as well as how well they are built, I do think it's a fair price for what you're getting. Now if I had to pick between the two, I'm actually leaning towards this PVD blacked out version of the watch. To me, it just looks a little more tactical, and the uh, PVD coating should make this watch a little bit more durable overall. So uh, let's actually focus on running the numbers on the PVD coated version of this watch, and you'll see some B-roll of the stainless steel model throughout the course of the video too. Now, being a diver's chronograph, it is slightly large. Uh, you get about close to a 44 millimeter case diameter with this guy. If you flip it to this side, uh, lug to lug between my thumbs comes in at an even 50 millimeters. Although you will note that the male end links do protrude from the lugs ever so slightly. So the effective lug to lug is extended to about 52 millimeters. But you can see the arcing profile that the case has. So it actually conforms very well to your wrist. Now in terms of case height, this watch comes in at about 15.5 millimeters. That is from the uh, bottom of the uh, screwed in and etched case back to the top of a flat sapphire crystal which carries some nice anti-reflective treatment on the underside as well. You can kind of see that blue haze near the very edge of the crystal. And lastly, the uh, lug opening for the supplied OEM bracelet is an even 22 millimeters. should you choose to accessorize with straps down the road. Although I do think that this bracelet actually balances out the uh, thicker head of the watch quite well. Now I do want to reiterate that this watch sits extremely comfortable on my seven and a half inch wrist. Uh, that's 19 centimeters and I can actually recommend this watch to anyone with a six and a half inch wrist or larger because of that curved lug profile. Just look how well it hugs the wrist, sits very evenly planted 
And I do gotta mention that the weight is distributed quite well. Sized up for my wrist, this actually comes in at a fairly substantial 218 grams. So you do get that wrist presence, but it's still uh, curvaceous enough to actually fit under my hoodie, no problem. Now, if the layout of a dial looks fairly familiar to you, it's probably because inside this watch runs a Swiss automatic Valju 7750 movement, which of course does have the three subdials as well as a day and day complication at the three o'clock position. If we quickly break down each of those subdials starting at the 12 o'clock position, that is your minute totalizer for the chronograph up to 30 minutes. And then below that, near the 6 o'clock, is your uh, chronograph hours, so you can actually time something for up to 12 hours. And then closer to the 9 o'clock position, you have your running seconds subdial, which is nicely differentiated because that subdial seconds hand is done in high contrast red compared to the uh, silver and polished subdials for the chronograph functions. Now you also notice some red text on the running seconds. That uh, loosely translates into out of a darkness light, which is a Canadian military lingo. And then it does indicate it is a Swiss movement. And then if we do jump over to the three o'clock, you can actually see you do have your day and date display. The uh, apertures for the day and date is actually nicely bordered. And I really like the applied Whitby Watch Company logo that is highly polished just above the date. And then if you look at the periphery of a dial, you actually have a chapter ring that's a tachymeter scale for the chronograph. And then you do have a diver's bezel just beyond the dial itself, which is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. The action is very, very nice. You get some smooth detents, but they are quite precise. There is no back play here. And the uh, bezel insert is actually done in a matte black ceramic, which I think matches the dial color quite well. And at a first glance, I actually thought this dial was a, kind of like a carbon fiber weave, but it's not. It's actually got a lot more texture to the dial than that. This is like a hobnail pattern. So it's actually made up of individually small pyramids that give a little more visual interest to the dial. And even though it is kind of busy overall, I do find that this watch is extremely legible with the applied hour markers and those simple but very prominent broadsword style hands. Now aiding in the legibility, both watches do have C3 Swiss Superluminova on the applied hour markers, the handset, and the triangle on the bezel. And I'll throw up a low light shot now, just so you guys can see how easy it is to get orientation with these watches. I love good loom, especially on a watch that also functions as a chronograph. And the Whippy Watch Company doesn't disappoint with a healthy, even application of loom across all the markers in the hands. Now in terms of chronograph operation, uh, you do have uh, two pushers on the side of the case as well as the screw down crown. So the pump style pusher at the two o'clock here is actually used to start and start the running chronograph seconds hand there. And then if you do stop it, at the four o'clock pusher here, you can hit it and everything resets back to 12 really quickly. These uh, Valju 7750 movements do run at four hertz. You get about a 44 hour power reserve, 25 joules, and it does have automatic uh, winding on the watch. And if you unscrew the uh, screw down crown, you can also manually wind this movement too. Now there are two additional positions to the crown. If you pop it out to the middle position, you can quickly set the day and date. And then if you pull it all the way out, you can actually hack the movement, stopping the seconds, and you can set to whatever reference time you like. And turning the watch to the side, you can see that the uh, crown is screwed down. It does have the Whitby Watch Company W logo there. And with respect to finishing, it's pretty much a satin finish across the entirety of the head of the watch as well as on the bracelet itself. So here's the side profile for the stainless steel version of the Intrepid X. With respect to the bracelet, it's a three link bracelet, uh, very nice tolerances on it. I think it's a pin in collar system if you want to size individual links. And then when you get to the clasp, you have three layers of micro adjustment. It does have a fold over security lock and twin trigger releasing mechanism to open up the clasp. 
Now all the Intrepid X chronographs do have this really nice press case back that has the compass, rose, and dagger motif for the Canadian Armed Forces. You do see an individual serial number for each watch, so this is 9 of 150. And because the case back is screwed down, it also indicates that this watch is water resistant down to 100 meters. So you can actually take this watch swimming, even though it does have the chronograph complication. So guys, that's my overview of the Intrepid X Divers Chronograph from the Whippy Watch Company. If I had to point out some subtle improvements to make moving forward, it's mainly to do with the bracelet, and I would really love to see uh, their bracelet use female end links with a little bit better articulation for each individual links, as well as some more micro adjustment on the side of a clasp. But outside of that, I do think that these watches are extremely well built quite practical and legible, and they do have some really cool Canadian heritage behind them. Now, as always, guys, if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It does help me out a lot. And as always, I can't wait to catch you guys in the next video.